not easy. It's really not easy to make something that's really good even better. When we rode the Triumph Street Triple RS a few years ago, back in India, we were blown away by the way it offered a lovely mix of street riding capabilities as well as performance of the track in one complete unit. The Triumph Street Triple RS was that one all-rounder go-to motorcycle. Well, Triumph has updated the model for 2020 and this is what it looks like. Think about it, is it going to be easy to make something that's really good even better? Big questions to be answered. The challenge of trying to improve an already impressive product is not going overboard with the changes and Triumph seems to have been mindful of doing just that. Take the styling for instance. What a few of you didn't like before was the bug-eyed look of the Street Triple RS. Well, for 2020, these eyes here are much more sharper and sleeker and this new LED DRL strip over here gives it an angry face that really looks menacing in the mirrors. And it's not just the headlamp that looks sharper. The body panels too have been remodeled to make the RS look a lot more focused. Well, besides the headlamp, you also have a new air intake, a new flight screen, a new radiator shroud, and a completely redesigned tail section as well. But more importantly, and the thing that I really like, is that new exhaust pipe over there with the carbon fiber finish on the top. It looks really good. It's not just these factors alone that enhance the appeal of the new RS. The large TFT display features a new range of layouts that change depending on the riding mode that's been selected and color options to suit individual preferences. But the numbers on the RPM3 dot were particularly hard to read, especially while riding at a quick pace. That said, the screen does offer useful information. In keeping with today's connected world, you can also pair your phone via Bluetooth through an accessory module that's sold separately. It shows turn-by-turn -turn navigation as well as allows you to operate the phone and the music. However, we couldn't really experience this as the module wasn't fitted to the test bikes that we were riding. But I feel I'm only nitpicking at this point because I couldn't care about the standard Bluetooth after firing up the RS's sweet inline triple engine. Now what Tram has done to the engine is that they've ensured there's 9% more power and torque in the mid-range and that has had a significant impact on the way this motorcycle rides. Out in the city when we're riding through the bylanes out here in Cartagena in Spain, I noticed that you could really stick in the mid-range and open the throttle and the bike would just blast ahead without any hesitation at all. So overall, what that does is that when you're riding in the city, you can stay in fourth or fifth gear around at 50 kph, 55 kph and just roll on the throttle and the bike just pulls ahead cleanly. But that's not all, because in the latter half of the day, we were taken to Circuito Cartagena, a fast, smooth and technical racetrack to experience more of the RS's prowess. Those long development hours have resulted in a new intake system and a 7% drop in rotational inertia that was achieved by machining a lighter crank, clutch and balancer while eliminating the anti-backlash gears which further reduces the mass and hence inertia. There's also a new exhaust system that has twin catalytic converters for a smoother flow. This means you have an eager and even more responsive engine than before. As was the case of riding on the street, Similarly, on the track, you could be probably in a higher gear in second or third gear around some of the tight corners here on the circuit and just roll on the throttle and there's so much mid-range grunt now that you can really, really pull hard and charge out of the corners. But though they worked on the mid-range, there is sufficient grunt at the top and out here on the racetrack at Circuito Cartagena, this thing was a blast to ride. The swiftness with which the RS gathers pace is exhilarating and quite a rush to be honest. And surprising, considering it's a Euro 5 compliant engine. And while the engine remains one of the biggest highlights of the Street Triple RS, there's no denying the fact that the electronics play a big role in ensuring you can extract the most from it with the assurance of a big safety net around you. As before, there are five rider modes, road, rain, sport, track and custom each altering the throttle response, ABS and traction control settings. Triumph has also refined the electronic rider modes to suit the new character of the engine. 
And while we are talking about electronics, the new up and down quick shifter allows you to pin the throttle open and bang up and down the gearbox without using the clutch lever. It really helps when you're trying to focus on sticking to the racing line on a new racetrack rather than bother about pulling the clutch lever and blipping the throttle before downshifting. The only gripe I had was that the system could have been smoother during downshifts. Also, in today's day and age, and given the fact that there was an opportunity with this upgrade, Triumph should have included an IMU, because these systems really are a step ahead in terms of finesse and control. Understandably, this would have driven the cost of the bike up by quite a margin, and Triumph says that their aim was to try and ensure the updated RS costs as much as the outgoing model. And I think that's impressive when you consider the fact that the fully adjustable suspension at the front and rear is the same as before, allowing you to set the bike up as per the conditions. Triumph had set up the suspension to offer a plush ride, so out on the streets of Cartagena, it was quite comfortable. While Spain's roads aren't anything like ours, I do remember the ride on the previous bike we rode in India felt firm but never jarring, and I suspect that'll be the case with the 2020 RS as well. But the beauty about the Triumph Street Triple RS is that you can ride it around the streets, you can ride it on the highway, and then head to your racetrack, swarm up the tires, drop the pressures, and out you go. This thing is ready to hit the track and set some blazing lap times. On the racetrack, with the suspension dialed in, the RS handled as if it were on rails, tipping in with little effort and staying true to the intended line. Cartagena's mixed bag of slow chicanes, fast corners and hairpin turns did little to upset the RS's rhythm as the bike flowed from corner to corner. This kind of stability and poise is what helps the rider push hard. And while the performance is engaging, you couldn't really exploit all of it without the confidence that a set of great brakes can offer. The Brembo M50 monoblocks offer superb stopping power and no matter how hard I braked, how late I braked, this motorcycle just slows down so confidently. Of course, you have the Pirelli Diablo Super Corsa SPs to thank also for the grip and the feedback and the confidence they offer. But overall, there's, there's so much high-level kit over here. This bike is so forgiving to ride that you could change your lines mid-corner, you could brake late and get away with it. What I really like about the RS, that's a motorcycle that you can live with every day. It's a track bike and a street bike fused into one, it's all the motorcycle that you need. Triampinda will launch the bike in January 2020 and is aiming to stick with the current prices. For its versatility and list of top drawer equipment, the new RS is certainly better than ever. And not to forget, it looks better too.